Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla review and today I'm taking a look at the RX-78 II Gundam Rollout Color from Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin MSD. Of course, if you're looking for some kits that come in a monochromatic box, aka Premium Bandai or Pureban, well I got mine through Bai and you can too so I'll throw a link down there in the description. So jumping right on into absolutely everything that comes inside of this box and this is a variant of the high grade Gundam RX-78 to the origin and this comes with pretty much everything that did just in a different color scheme and this is an absolute armory. Two beam rifles, a bazooka, a shield, a pair of beam sabers, we've got a whole host of hands so this is one ambidextrous kit and then a bunch of parts for changing the loadout of the mobile suit, some of which are mentioned in the instructions, some are not but are left over on the runners. Lastly then we have two sheets of stickers, that is some color correcting foils and some sticker style decals, quite a few of those. This is one beautiful Gundam, now let's check it out. Once again, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, the online learning community for creatives, where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Have you been looking for some new skills to complement your Gunpla arsenal? Skillshare has all the classes you need. Do you want to get better at art, better at drawing, better at designing, or do you want to move into 3D modeling? Even if it's as simple as getting better images and film for your social media, Skillshare has everything that you need. Skillshare has no ads and they're always adding new premium classes so you can go wherever your creativity takes you. I've said it before and I will say it again, I super highly recommend Dale McManus's short but extremely efficient video series on taking absolutely astounding shots with just your phone. So at next to no equipment whatsoever, you can take the best pictures of your Gunpla collection and share them online. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click that link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So jumping right on into that full 360 degree spin and I will mention that this is pretty much what it looks like out of the box with a little bit of panel lining but I did cut these safety knobs off the antennas around on the back of the head. This color scheme works so well for robots, the panel lining looks phenomenal against the white because it just stands out so much and honestly I love this design. So once again, this is heavily based on the high grade Gundam The Origin, which is a fantastic kit, but we do have some parts that have been changed physically, not just the color scheme, but the colors we have here is white, light gray, red, and the gray of the frame. Besides that, that is pretty much it. We've got some stickers I'll talk about in a second, but this looks extremely, extremely cool, clean, and an awesome take on the RX-78 too. So when it comes to the stickers, what we get in here is this right here. I'll pop up on the screen what this looks like when these aren't taken off. I haven't used that many, just the main ones that are reflective that you kind of need, but besides that, I did not use the ones that go on the sides of the joints. So all these circular sections on the sides of the elbow and the sides of the knees, you do need stickers for those, probably down here on the ankle too. Yeah, we've got three sets of those, so definitely on the ankle too. Those need to be in gray, but honestly, I just decided to go with a little bit of panel lining instead. So when it comes to the other stickers, the ones that I did use, that is the standard ones from the eyes. This kit does not have shiny ones, just regular yellow. We've got some shiny ones up on the head for the front head camera that is in red. The rear head camera also in red. And finally, we do have a sticker in yellow for on this little V on the crotch, which I did not use. I just panel lined it instead. But just if you want this to be color accurate, that needs to be yellow. So as well as the color correcting foil stickers, in here we also have some sticker style decals. So it is always cool to get some decals in a kit. And these do look really nice. The ones up in the shoulders really do have quite the impact, especially that one up on the left hand shoulder that says RX. And I will mention I barely used any of these, barely scratched this surface whatsoever. And I'll also mention these are sticker styles, so you will be able to see the border around them when they are stuck on. That's one reason I didn't use them all, but it is cool to have them included. So like I mentioned before, this is based on the standard version of the RX-78 to the origin and this is the closest thing I have to the standard variant. The head, obviously, is not original. So there has been quite a few physical changes made to it including in the body and the head, a lot of which are also color changes as well and they did take the liberty of changing some aspects when they changed the color. For example, when you take the yellow there on the Gundam's iron diaper, the detailed aspects are towards the top but if you move in the new version here it's not just a color swap these all come on a different runner so that means they're completely different well by completely i mean mildly the other differences include a change of the legs we've got a big armor panel on the front of the standard version and that is not present on the rollout version 
The standard version has big vents in its chest and does not have a color separated cockpit door. When we take the rollout version, it does have a color separated cockpit door and it's got smaller vents in the chest. And of course, one of the biggest obvious differences is the fact that the head does not have a V-fin, we've got two antennas around back. So as is usually a case with a P Bandai kit that has a lot of changed parts, we do have some leftover plastic. Uh, stop interrupting there. This isn't all of it, by the way, but this is kind of interesting. So if you take these kind of leftover segments, you've got the vast majority of a head, you've got the whole front segment of a torso, and then you do have some upper legs, which are basically intact, and then we've got some upper arm parts, etc. So if you are a fan of making stuff like Gundam dioramas, you could almost have yourself a bit of a destroyed Gundam on the ground. And what it also means is you can grab this, and use it with the muzzle and eye segments of the head that we have attached on here and you can give this a traditional RX-78-2 head with the V-fin. So this kind of gives you the idea of what that would look like, kind of. Or maybe you could just take the V-fin off this one and stick it on the other head. Yeah, it totally fits and now we've got three antennas. I bet that Gundam gets all the best radio stations. So now moving into the accessories and here's the overview of the armory we get inside of this box. So let's check it all out one by one. So we're going to be starting off with some of the onboard weaponry. Right off the bat, this is how it was supposed to be built out of box. So that is with the shoulder magnum up on the left shoulder. But we do have all of the optional shoulder parts we would have seen with the origin version of the Oryx 78 II. So as for the shoulder mounted options, swapping them out is simple. For example, you can just pop off the magnum like this, pop on this little panel, and then you've got nothing up there. Or you've got the closed panels which contain the Gatling guns. To attach the Gatling guns, you just pop them both on like so, pop the panel then on top of those, and that is what it looks like with both of those Gatlings poking out of the shoulders. And these look phenomenal. Digging that right there. So even though it is not mentioned in the instructions whatsoever, we still have some of those arm-mounted weapons. So in order to attach those, you just pop off the hand and then the wrist segment like so, and then pop on the alternate parts like this. So once again, these arm Vulcans don't seem to be a canonical weapon for this particular rollout version, but the option is there for customs or, well, you know, fun. Next up in here, we've got a standard pair of beam sabers with the standard pink beam. This is what they look like attached onto the rollout version of the Oryx 78 II. And as usual, when these are not in use, you can just pop out the beams and then put the beam saber handles up on the backpack just like so for storage in that classic Oryx 78 II style. I will mention the attachment is a little bit wishy-washy and these are a bit of a loss risk. And while we're speaking about the storage up here on the shoulders, I will mention that also left over on the runners is that absolutely killer looking Gundam the Origin Shoulder Cannon. It can pop on either side like so and swing up over the shoulder. I love this weapon. If you've got two, you can connect two. So the Origin version of the Oryx 78 II is a badass amongst high grade kits. It can wield beam rifles akimbo because it's got two beam rifles and two beam rifle holding hands. How cool is that? We've got two different types, they attach the same way. It's the sandwich style hands, you open up the back of the hand like so. After attaching it on, throw in the beam rifle like this, and then you put the back of the hand on again, and there you go. You've got the beam rifle attached. First up is this one, which is the early type. Big, bulky, and awesome. When it comes to moving parts, we've got a pull-out handle on the side there, which is a really nice design, and a moving side-to-side -side sight. Very cool. Sticker there for the sight. Then we have that very classic looking Oryx 78 II style beam rifle. Now this one has a moving handle up front again, can swing side to side. We have this up here, the sight which can swing side to side as well, just like so. When these are not in use, you can just pop them off like so, one and two. And on the sides of both of these, we have a flip out peg for storage. So you can mount this onto any of the hard points on the back. There's one on the backpack, one on the butt flap, and there's both of them mounted. But we also have mounting points on the back of the shield. And the awesome thing about this kit is you can mount both of these beam rifles at once without them getting in each other's way. How cool is that? Mounting points everywhere, multiple weapons. This is the Rambo of high grade Gompla. And as for this shield, it is absolutely awesome. You can mount this on the arm either way. It just pops on like so. I flipped it around here to the standard origin way, which is the letterbox viewing slot towards the bottom. Now this is crazy. It has a whole bunch of jazz around back here so it can move on the arm. It's loaded up with weapons right now, so I'm not gonna move it, but it moves a lot, holds on great, and is a fantastic shield. 
So the next and final weapon we have in here is the Hyper Bazooka. This is very, very nice, color separated nicely, besides that one big old nasty sticker we have for the lens. Besides that, though, yeah, it looks pretty damn good. When it comes to attaching this, first off, it does have some moving parts. That is the side up top. The handle can pivot for ease of posing. This attaches into the same holding hands we would have used. Once again, this is easy to attach. Watch out for those beam sabers up on the backpack. They're easy to knock off, but besides that, looking pretty good. So when the Hyper Bazooka is not in use, you can just take it off like so, flip them around. We've got an adapter for sticking into that butthole. And then you can stick the Hyper Bazooka into that. And this is something I love about certain kits. And I love about the Origin one and this one too. And that is you can load up all the equipment on the Gundam just like so. Actually, yeah, never mind. I thought I'd be able to attach this up onto his back. So his, well, both arms are free, but that is not the case, sadly. Still awesome though. So I was actually going to skip this part right here, which is the articulation, until I realized I have not reviewed the standard version of the Origin RX-78 II. This is one of my all-time favorite kits. It's rock solid, and it's got some great articulation, while still at the same time maintaining a fairly average and standard build for an RX-78 II. Once again, this is pretty much identical to the Origin version, so this works for that too. No polycap in its neck, so we get an epic giggity 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 goo. We've got a ball joint up top and a hinge down below, so this can really... Yeah, ball joint, see? It's in there. It can really look around. So the shoulder joint in here is very nice. We've got two different joints. That's the standard polycap and a plastic joint inside of that. The polycap allows the shoulder to move forward and back like so, whereas the plastic joint makes sure it can lift its arm all the way up to that point. Very nice. We've got the regular ball joint jazz going on there as well as a full 360 spin. I will mention though that the shoulder joint is attached right into the shoulder armor. The arm then moves inside of the shoulder. We've got that full 360 degree spin right there. One absolutely sweet ab crunch. Look at that. And out to the back, it's just as impressive. And this can side to side tilt, rotate as well. So this is no paralyzed kit right here. These skirting armors can move up like so. Side skirts are the usual up and down, as well as back and forward rotation, and nothing at the butt flap. We've then got a drop down mechanism at the legs. This affects both legs at once. And when it comes to the kicks, there it is all the way up to the front. There it is out to the back, a little blocked. And right there is our full splits. Next up then, we've got that full 360 spin at the upper leg. Very nice bend at the knee here, double jointed, and the knee armor actually moves a little bit with that, so that looks very dynamic and very, very cool. In the rear of the leg, we do have an opening segment right here with the vernier inside. A bit of a wiggle here at this armor segment, but not a lot, and when we get that on the ground, without raising the foot off the ground, there it is all the way to the front with a bit of a toe bend and then there it is all the way out to the back a little blocked and there's the side woo two sides so the side to side is great so yeah the articulation on this is absolutely phenomenal if you want to see what it's like against a bunch of other high grade rx 782s i did do a video comparing them all before but when it comes to this kit right here this is phenomenal so much fun to pose it looks great it's got all the visuals on top of the fact that it has great articulation, so it always looks spectacular. Killer kit right here. And that goes for the standard full release version as well. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and I was thinking about this a lot. I have not actually reviewed the RX-78 II Origin version at all, but on feeling this and checking out the one I have pre-built over here, I was inclined in my mind to say this is platinum tier. This is, like, when it comes to it, the best all-round RX-78 II ever. So I went to check out the video I did comparing them all, and that is exactly what I gave it back then. So yes, this is 100% a platinum tier kit. The standard version, that is. That, of course, does carry across to the P Bandai version, but once again, is it worth it to you? That is a decision only you can make. Trying to get P Bandai kits can be a little difficult, a little expensive, and this is just a slight variation over the one you can just buy at a normal retail release. However, if you are like me and just love to get awesome variants of kits, this is as awesome a variant of an awesome kit as you can get. That white looks stupendous. Anyway, I got mine through Bai, you can too. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time.
Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking those who support me here on the channel as members and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Van Fon, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, Orgy59061, and Gumpla UK Limited.